two, one, two, three, four. <laughs> only person I could have ever ended up with in my life. We're a team. Plus, getting somebody who can talk about your work, it's exciting. Drew will come in and be like, that sucks. <laughs> <laughs> That's the hard part, but once we get past that, <laughs> I never say that. <laughs> Yeah, it's kind of hard to imagine not being with an artist. I mean, sometimes, like, if you imagine it, it'd be like, oh, wouldn't it be great to have someone, like, a doctor who can, like, check that <laughs> abscess on your foot and make a lot of money, yeah. <laughs> check that abscess. Do you have an abscess on your foot? <laughs> oh I thought that's why you were breaking up with me. <laughs> <laughs> I've got like a gangrenous hole that go, starts in my foot and comes out here. I think it's okay. Ew. <laughs> One of Drew's uh, most attractive qualities is her joie de vivre. And she's always just got this, not always, but she's got a lot of energy and excitement about stuff and uh like we'd be driving along and she'd be like oh see that sign turn over there and like let's go there and she's very spontaneous uh um adventurous probably more adventurous in some ways than i am but we're adventurous in different ways i think um we take different kinds of risks but definitely and she's extremely smart and a really good artist and um, funny. Mm. Wow. Yeah. You don't have to say good things if you don't want to. Oh. Nancy did a, a film called The Strange Eyes of Dr. Mize like years ago. Thank and I was the art director and I I could have like throttled her any moment during this. Like Likewise. I was working my butt off. Like, I'd ask Drew, could you make like a blue table? No. <laughs> we worked so hard. And you know, I'm making it sound horrible, but it was super fun and it was so interesting and wonderful. And so we help each other. We were both in the studio and she goes, I don't know what it is, but I just really love coming over here. Well, what did you say? Do you ever just get really happy because you're happy going into the excited. studio? And it's, I remember one sabbatical not that long ago, we get 10 week sabbaticals and I had to go back. The day I had to go back to teaching, I was in, I went into the studio and, the, and I cried. You know, I don't really know why, but it's, just feels like the right thing to do, like with my time and the most enjoyable, pleasurable, never ending kind of experience, you know. I mean, it'll end when I die, but I mean, it feels like something you can do until you die and just keep doing it. And I feel really fortunate to be an artist because. Like, other people are like, what am I going to do with my retirement? It's like, that's not going to be a problem, you know? I mean, uh, uh, it's more like how you, it's, the problem is like trying to get through the last 
30 years and have like a day job and still keep your creative energy and things going, you know. Um, this is why I admire Nancy, because she seems to find the energy to like do both. And I find it very hard to step away and like um, try to negotiate the kind of things that you have to negotiate to to get galleries or show your work or like you know I don't have that kind a gallery. of thing. Well, I know. Get funding, whatever. I don't know. Um, maybe it's maybe it's. I can apply the stuff, and I apply, but truly, a couple things a year. Um, I'm a terrible schmoozer. Like, I do not do schmoozing, really. And so I don't really make much effort to get the things I want to do. I'd love to be able to make money on my work, but I don't really put myself out there for that. And I think you kind of have to be compartmentalized so that you... When you're in the studio, you're doing what you said. And then you have to be able to sort of like be the other person who can write a proposal yeah. or something. Um, and it Get takes a certain like kind of compartmentalizing. I learned from the best how to compartmentalize. I think my father might have been on the... You know, almost he wasn't civil, but I mean, he didn't have that far to go. So I mean, I think he was pretty compartmentalized. Um, and I don't know that you're, I don't know if that's one of your best things, compartmentalized. Mm -hmm. You need an agent. Um, I, you know, like I'm, I'm terrible at long-term goals. Like I, I don't, I just don't do that. And I found that like takes very little to really excite me. I mean, like, it's just the way I am. I, like, try to find those moments in every single day that is exciting, honestly, you know, like, because Like, we Drew don't... would never save any money left her own devices. This is what I'm talking about. I would not be here. <laughs> like, I made more money 30 years ago than I make right now because I had a super good job. And... Um, she didn't I save spent a penny. Every single penny. I was flying to Paris on the weekend. I was flying to New Mexico every weekend. I was like, whatever I wanted to do, I did it. And I like did it immediately. And I like ate out every night and I like, you know, like bought whatever I wanted and, you know, lived in DC and it was like really, yeah, costly. And then and then I went back to graduate school. <laughs> I like had nothing. And you were asking like your family and how how supportive they are of like your choices in terms of being an artist. Oh my God. My the moment I decided to leave this job that I had that was like, you know, working for the government. I was like in administration at the Smithsonian, you well, know. She's and chief like, of design. You make it sound like you were like a paper pusher. <laughs> well, I was. That's why I left. And then, so I left that, and my father was just beside himself. He just was just thought I was like the most ridiculous person in the whole world. I'm going back to art school. You're, you're, you're <laughs> what? school early because I hated it and then went to art school. My partner at the time and I started doing performance art which really wasn't where I thought I would end up. I consider myself an introvert and uh, but it, you know it kind of came out of the punk era really. My day job was working in a children's hospital uh, doing video with kids in the hospital and creating a TV channel for them because at the time there was just ABC, NBC, CBS, and PBS and we had kids at Johns Hopkins that were staying there for sometimes quite lengthy time with bone marrow transplants and stuff so we had a programming on our own channel and 
we had a puppet mascot and I would go room to room and visit the kids with a puppet and make live TV shows um, that kids would tune into from their rooms. But we also had a studio audience in the playroom. So I was doing that in performance art for like my, in my 20s and then went back to grad school in my 30s. You know, I've been realizing more and more lately that I'm a, you know, multidisciplinary, interdisciplinary artist. And, but I've also thought, oh, I guess people probably take that as like, you don't really know how to do anything. It's kind of like <laughs> degree, right? uh, but I actually do have, you know, some real chops in, in a couple of areas, but I'm also like, I enjoy going into other areas that I don't know my ass from applesauce, but it keeps things interesting. I intentionally try to like dabble in areas I have no expertise in, like animation or like, you know, um, performance or like writing an opera or script or like you know like things I know nothing about but I have to like bring that into the work. I love working with my hands. I mean I was a very late uh, um, at adopting digital but then I also do love the flexibility of digital and the stuff you can do with it. I mean, to me, it's just a tool. It's not like an end in itself. I don't enjoy spending a lot of time in the computer so much, but I mean, what a tool, you know. What is digital anyway? I like, I was thinking about this. I'm like, I have no idea how that works. You know, those digital paintings, like, um, that's what I call them. I just, you know, and I'm like, how does the printer know what to pr print? Like, what kind? Is I don't know. I just don't get it. I don't understand any of it. Yeah, I like working with my hands a lot better than the computer. But I'm always amazed at what the computer can do. And I um, remember learning, like, how to do digital stuff when we were in graduate school because like that we was we were like, in graduate school at the most awkward analog to digital time right yeah and like I, mean, I took was... one computer class and then I'm like oh my god like I, I don't have to, to do use all... letter set I know anymore. like I used to have to do this stuff by hand and you can like do all this stuff and like put it all together this is amazing and I thought it was such a cool thing that I like went way beyond what everybody else was doing just because I was so excited. You were an early adopter. I mean, you started using the computer to do digital design work. Mm -hmm. I mean, I think you early had the on. first Macintosh computer of anyone you yeah. knew and you were mm -hmm. using it to design stuff. To a young artist, I would say... Well, one thing is, which is a little bit negative, is like, don't do it if you don't really want to do it, because nobody's there saying, like, make more art. I'm going to pay you a lot of money. Here's a couple of Lexuses for your garage. I mean, that's not the thing. I and mean, you probably have to work two jobs, and one being an artist, one having a day job. And But if you do want to do it, like, don't worry about too much about what, like, people, like, choose who you're going to listen to and make sure that they're people that deserve to be listened to and not just because of what position they're in, you know. Also, like, um, I, I work with so many people that are, like, I see it in my head. I see it in my head. I just need to execute this. And and I think that's pretty typical of like, you know, um, way younger people who haven't had the experience of trying to make something. And like, you know, to kind of like lose that sensibility, like I see it in my head, now I must make it 
take the idea of art making back to discovery and like this reciprocity with like material and ideas and like really kind of like engage deeply with the making process and like understand that you might actually learn something. Oh, that's mm. the best part. That's the best part. It is. I that's mean, God like, forbid that's that something magical. was what I thought it was going to be. Right? It'd probably be so boring. I know. I mean, it's just or like, like so much le less than what it. Yeah, it, what it gets it, and, all yeah. the elaboration and the the wrong turns and the things that happen accidentally. And I mean, that's what the flexibility. Like the to me, that's I think so much of the fun of it is like finding things you didn't expect, being flexible enough to recognize them. Um, you know, it's like being a, detect a detective, like following these clues. And it's, if I knew where I was going to end up, I would be bored stiff. Yeah. Why there would, would be no reason to make it. Yeah. Like I think of it as taking a journey without a map and you just keep putting one foot in front of the other. That is the exciting part. It is exciting. And like I was saying, I have this explorer gene or whatever thing, but that is the thing that I think we both share is that kind of sense of like, you know, where am I going? Like, where is this thing taking me? And that's exciting. And that's what takes you to the studio. You know, it's like, sometimes I've just like, I couldn't wait to like get up in the morning to like rush over there and like continue to work on, you know, like something. And like, it just becomes so fun. 